people out there and welcome back to Fat Lads Going Goal. We're back just like we said we'd be back and I'm your host and fat lad with a god complex, Mark Watson. And in my bottom left hand corner tonight. Everything is open, nothing is set in stone. Rivers turn to oceans, oceans tide Pew home. Oh. Home is where Pew's heart is, but Pew's heart had to roam. Drifting over bridges, never to return, watching bridges Watch burn. Bridges, Pew's yeah, driftwood, driftwood. <laughs> floating underwater, breaking into pieces. Pieces. pieces, pieces, just driftwood, hollow and of no use. Waterfalls will find Pew, bind Pew, and grind Christopher Pew. What a gorgeous song that is, by the way. Um, by uh, one of my all time favorite, one of my all time favorite bands, Travis. That song is Driftwood, by the way. Go and listen to it, kids. Your dad's loved it. Would you say um, Travis had the potential to be one of the biggest uh, British bands of all time? Honestly, it's it's such a massive thing for me. Like they I were, know it. they were on the cusp of ultimate greatness. Like that's when they released um, the Man Who and then the Invisible Ooh. Band. They that those two albums were masterpieces, and and they were they were right there. They were like headline Glastonbury kind of level. They were ready to take over the world. They had an American tour plan. They had everything. So what and happened? Then, Where did it all go wrong? Where did it well, all go wrong? Drummer, for the drummer broke his. Did he break his back. I think it was in a back, diving yeah. accident. I think in a swimming pool. Hmm. Um, was it something along those lines? It was the drummer anyway. Um, and yeah, and they had to cancel about a year and a half of stuff. And unfortunately, the world moved on and sort of left Travis behind. But Travis became the driftwood. Honestly, like Travis walked <laughs> and then broke their back. So every other boy band in boy band since <laughs> since like well actually you're right. I think not not so much boy band. Like I think Travis walked. They, so they were indie. The Killers, they? yeah, good run. So Kasabian, Feeder. good run. Yeah, all these They're sorts of guys. Yeah. And I think recently as well, David Beckham revealed that he, you know, when he had his Mohican, yeah. Fran Healy, the lead singer of Travis, Fran also Healy. had a Mohican at that time. And I'm pretty sure Beckham revealed recently that he copied Fran Healy. So, like, they were musical giants, mm. but they were also trendsetters in the fashion world as mm. well, um, with hairstyles, you know, one of the most iconic hairstyles in football when Beckham had his Mohican. Was and that was of... Fran Healy, my Fran man Healy. Fran Healy. I love Travis. Absolutely love Travis. That's God bless him. probably the only introduction I've ever done where I've actually thought, what does Pew like? <laughs> like he's took four yeah. years, but yeah. I finally thought, maybe Pew could enjoy this once in a while. I was very respectful of you, and I appreciated it massively. It's I never going to happen blood. again. Um, no, no, no. Which is why I had to I had to get all of that off my chest now, because <laughs> oh, no. I know next week we're getting some emo two thousand American <laughs> shit again. So. Well, I I tried to put the new before new you before. Oh yeah, in, but not prayer. What they don't keep say? Right, yeah, keep the... right on forever, Pew. <laughs> oh, that would have worked. It like literally just oh, fits for you, Marco. Oh, no, I looked through all those lyrics and got it. It never says you. You could oh. keep right yeah. on forever, pew. It's gonna be true. Right on forever, forever true to, to the royal pew. pew. Oh, that pew. wrote itself. Oh, what would you think of that UB40 song? I quite like it. it's catchy. I think, the, the, yeah, it's no Travis. Let's, let's not beat <laughs> around the bush, but, but it's uh, no, it's, it's catchy. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to. 600 people here in it on <laughs> Easter Monday. No, that's a joke. There's going to be loads there. On a scale of like ABBA to Travis, how much are you oh. looking forward to this UB40 gig on Monday? The, the ultimate scale, the that ultimate is. Scale wow. of my God. Annoying Swedish pop band and <laughs> random Scottish genius. indie yeah. nobody. Not random. No, no, they're not nobody's either. Um, I am. I'm. I'm. I'm I'm leaning slightly. I'm, I'm around the halfway line. Are you kind of um, at the darkness? I mean, I mean to. No, no, no. Darkness. To darkness. No, no, no. no they, they, 
they're, they're on either side. They are. I'm, oh, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm leaning further into the into the Travis side, okay. around the half line. I'm building my attack up. You're about blur. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're about blur. Maybe. Excited. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. okay. Mm. Um. Yeah. yeah, they're uh, they're turfing all the Preston fans out, aren't they? <laughs> Initially, the Preston fans are like, "Oh, this is good. We get a free concert." You don't, lads. You no. Know. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> see you later. Sorry about that. And also, yeah, uh, a lot of you might not be able to see much because I was at the Blues Women game on Sunday, and they've already taken out a lot of yeah, the seats have, yeah. to get it ready. And if they put the stage up before the game, some of those ones in the corner, I assume they're not going to sell those seats because you're not going to see anything. Lads. It's uh, the stage is halfway up at the moment. Okay. Um, so yes, it more than likely will be. By, yeah. By Monday. So I'm guessing they won't they won't be selling the seats on stage level because you won't be able to see the other side of the pitch. I mean, place. it would be good. You go to see Preston away at Blues and turn like suddenly you're sound checking for UB40. Yes. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Pay pays your price for admission there, doesn't it? Like yeah. I only went to watch the Blues. Now I'm doing a drum solo. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it should be good. Uh, for Christ's sake, Jay. For Christ's sake, Jay. Don't miss this pen, Jay. Don't miss... Red, red, <laughs> white. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it should be good. They had... I was. I mean, I don't know if you know. You probably do. I was on the radio this morning, but, you know, it's just... Huh? Yeah, I thought I'd mention it. On, You're on, kidding. With my mate, Ricky. On what? Again. Well, BBC WM, you know, just breakfast show, prime time. Oh, yeah. Prime time listening, but, yeah. Ricky, you asked me on. I'm like, that, um... I'm like, racks I'm on. LBC or whatever it no, is. That, BBC, no, BBC, WM, different, oh, different letters. Uh, but after me, they had one of the guys from UB40. I forget which one it was. Which one? I forget. Um, mm. Mainly because I don't know any of their names. Uh, not Ali he, Campbell. He, no, not him. He was very excited nah. to be there. But they gave him like this massive introduction, like this glowing like rep, like oh, everything, his, his whole CV, his career and everything. With me, it was just like, oh, yeah, it's Marfan Fallads. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I thought we were bros, Ricky. Yeah. Did he say one of the hosts? It did say one oh, of the hosts, yeah. There's, there's only two one. hosts. There's not two. There's there only is one. two. I am not a host. There's only there... one that puts all the work in, but there is two of us. Oh, there's two of us. I'm not a host. You are the host. I am the... What, what are you? Uh, You're the Phil Jupiter's. Well, I'm the pundit. Um, yeah, well, yeah, I could be team captain, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. team captain. That's that's a that's a good title. Anyway, yeah. Sorry, yeah. After Is there anything going on this week? What's happened? <laughs> after four minutes of nonsense, we have a show of two halves. We always <laughs> yeah. do the first half about blues. It always is. Then in the second half, we have got a little special uh, teaser of our new sister podcast. Uh, the Back to the Pitching podcast, which is all about blues women, uh, hosted by the fantabulous Shannon C. Um, but that's coming up later. I've got to say we're back, like we said, we're back, but oh, well, I've missed it. Who cares? Anyway, yeah. blues. Well, if, if people have got here, then <laughs> oh, yeah. don't worry about it. Don't worry about that. I'll, I'll drink been, to you if you've made you've it. You've done enough to get here. Like, if <laughs> Travis play. didn't put you off, then oh, <laughs> come on, no, no, no. no, I'm not having that. QPR today. Ooh, today, yeah. Pew. Is today? Good Friday going to be a great Friday, Pew? That's, a, that's good. Uh, Thanks, game day podcast, that's good, isn't it? Releasing the pod on a game well, day. Well, we're committed. It's, all, it's, all, it's almost clever, that is. Um, yes, I... What, what are you asking me? That what, My, uh, it's good my Friday. thoughts, my predictions? I'll be honest, mate. I just yep. thought, you know what? Great Friday, good Friday... There's you a play on words make... there. I just wanted to yeah. say that. I don't actually care about the game. So talk That's about good. what you want. Talk about Travis. We'll finish. It'll be 1-1. So don't worry about <laughs> it. Right, so it'll be an okay Friday. <laughs> Are you better feeling than, Better than the all? Lord had about 2,000 odd years ago. Yeah, and 20 something. Mm. Probably not 20. 2,000 and... Probably about no. 2,000. Just over two. How old was Jesus? Oh, what was he? Like mid-30s? Was 30? He mid I didn't think... What was the life expectancy back then? Probably not mid thirties. No. If anyone no, from must have been um, Jesus' that. time is listening, please do write yeah. into the show and let us yeah. know. Any expert? Uh, last time you field. went to Jesus' birthday, how many candles were on that cake? And then we can big cake, big yeah. cake. Um, Pio. Yes. How optimistic are you for the QPR game? Uh, I'm. I'm more optimistic, I think, than I would have been walking out of the Watford game. Mm. Um, whether that's that's probably a combination of things. The the Rowett appointment, the certainly. Um, you know, and just a bit of time, obviously, passing after the Watford game and, and realisation that, okay, we've, we've, you know, a two-week break within 
with the internationals. Um, they've had two weeks to get themselves ready and um, a, a, ch a chance to to refresh and revitalise and get some new ideas in under Rowett. Um, so I think, yeah, I'm I'm more optimistic than I would have been walking out. I do I do think on the face of it against the side that are down there with us, um, it's must not lose. I know a lot of people use the must win mm. situation. I think this one's probably must not lose. Um, They're all must not lose. Well, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's certainly against the team who are also down there. Um, mm. You know, you don't want QPR gaining too much ground on us. Um, is it a big so, six-pointer? Uh, is it a six-pointer? I think it's... A, it's I think, what, what are they? What A point ahead of us, QPR? Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, I mean, it's a... You could almost call it a three-pointer, couldn't you? Because I think if you win the game, you get three points. Is that right? Last, I hang on. Uh, yeah, mathematically, yes, that's correct. Yeah, you get three, yeah. three points so, for a win. Yeah. So if we, I mean, if we, if we just let's say, for instance, we called it a three-pointer. Okay. Um, and then, and then, basically, whoever wins gets three points. Okay. Um, I'll put that to the club, and we'll see what. Uh, yeah. We'll kick that yeah. idea around and see what. Comes yeah. Up. I think it's a good way to describe the game. Yeah. Yeah, but on the face of it, you don't want QPR going four points clear with seven games left. Chance to go above them if you win, but ultimately, I think that's why I kind of think if it's one-one with like twenty to play, mm -hmm. I think we'll probably settle. And Take if it finishes one-one, we'd be we'd be the happier team if you like. So. Sturk have got a hull, so we could go if we win. We could go above Sturk as well. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Plymouth. Well, if we win, there's a chance we could go to. We could fly Plymouth. just outside the playoffs, then. So, yeah, potentially with this league. So we're assuming Plymouth will lose to Norwich. We're assuming. I would like to assume. That. I'd like to assume that we're assuming Stirk will lose to Hull. Uh, if we yeah. beat QPR, who's next? So Blackburn, we could go level on points with Blackburn. Uh, goal yeah. difference would keep us below them, so we could potentially. Who have they got? Uh, Blackburn have got. A team that plays football in the championship. Ipswich. <laughs> They've got Ipswich, so that at home, Ip but Ipswich. Okay. That's the late kickoff. Tough. Yeah. One of the late kickoffs. So that, that could be a loss for them as well. So it could be not only could it shoot us three whole places up, uh, yeah. which will see us comfortably in eighteenth, where we feel safe and at home. Ah, that's, that's where we it. belong. At home. Um yeah. It, yeah. yeah, it will start making ground on Blackburn. And yeah, Rowett could have us in the playoffs by uh <laughs> By June, are we mathematically outside out of the? Playoffs? I think if we lose against QPR, we are mathematically we out. So in a few yeah. hours' time, I'm sad to say, folks, that could be our season done. Um, it's a shame. It's a shame. It is no, but I, yeah, I, I, I just think yeah, set up. I think he'll set up hard to beat. Um, make sure that I think the last two weeks has probably been eradicating those silly mistakes. You know proper focusing on on your own personal individual performance so that you're not being the one to to cost us um and i think yeah as i say if it's if it's tight if it's even with 15 minutes to go or so um i think we'd probably take that do you not think that bearing in mind preston are something like ninth i think yes currently ninth. Mm. do you not think that qpr is the one that we that last 15 minutes we go for it in Preston is the one we... Yeah, we uh, well, results. in theory, yes. Have you seen our away record, though? Uh, sadly, yes. We did a whole yeah. quiz on it last week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so um, I think I think set up difficult to beat away from home. Um, uh, well, a lot more difficult to beat than we have been this mm -hmm. year away from home. Um, and then, yeah, back back yourselves at home with, with a decent crowd, hopefully. So the the teams around us on Monday. Um, so uh, Sheffield Wednesday, we're assuming they're pretty much dead in the water. It's a bit of a manic Monday, isn't it? Just another manic Monday. Stirk have got Huddersfield. Uh, Wish there was. Someday. Oh, now that is that is that a three pointer or I a six think pointer? That one. Um, just looking in the notes. Yeah, that still just counts as three points. Just that's still three. Just, still just that, three. That's a that's a big game, man. <laughs> that is a big game. Uh, that is a Sunderland, big game. Blackburn. Uh, oh, Blackburn have got a stinker of a weekend. Friends, QPR, Swansea. Oh. Uh, Rotherham. QPR, 
Voldemort QPR have got two home games. Yep. Uh, no, QPR are away at Swansea. Oh, okay. I was going to say. Sorry, I was really wrong. Uh, yeah. Plymouth are home to Bristol City. Okay. Who are yeah. currently 14. So there is... There's chances. There's chances for teams, but there's also chances for us as well. There so. is, a, yeah, a chance for us to get out of it and also a chance for us to completely sink our season forever. Um, <laughs> can Rowett fail? you yeah and i know what you're gonna say yeah if we go down of course he's failed ooh, ooh. yes but in, in terms of his career mm. um i don't think he can fail because i think if we go down it, everyone says well look what you had to kind of like dare i say his name rooney at derby keep him up you're a hero go down we well, had all those points deductions so what did you expect yeah yeah Kind yeah. of with Rowett walking into yeah. us with eight games left, we, you expect we are, yeah, but it's not like we're six points adrift. Do you know what I mean? We are still no, currently fair, outside, yeah. the, outside the drop zone with eight games to play. Um, so yeah, I, I listen, he's been bought ultimately, he's been bought in to keep us up. So if we don't stay up, then technically he has failed, you know, he hasn't done the job that he came in to do. So, um, well, maybe not that drastic, no. Um, Unless he loses eight on the bounce and reveals a villa top after it. But, um yeah, I, I think I think I think he can I am kinda of surprised that he took the job on in a way. I'm if he, not because I he think absolutely he knows no fail. Mm, yeah. I, I think no matter I think, what yeah. happens for the rest of this season, Rooney is getting the lion's share of the blame from the world. Well, yes. Not from yeah. you, obviously. You will go and cry in the corner <laughs> and light your candle in front of your picture of Rooney. We all know that. But the Matt majority of, of people will blame mm-hmm. Rooney, not mm-hmm. Rowett. That well, I think there'll be less... The season. There'll be certainly less impetus on the Rowett time, um, being it's only eight games. But, um, yeah. <laughs> he is very young to be this firefighter if you like and maybe maybe you know maybe you have to you have to back him and and um value what he said in his interview that he probably wouldn't have done this for any other club rather than blues um never underestimate so, the pull of a ub40 gig well it's, it's essentially yeah it's, yeah uh, yeah it's no question I mean, if, Chavis, if they had chavis <laughs> would have got like with a stick on mohawk <laughs> <laughs> yeah. are travis even still going why does it all yes they are i tell you what travis are doing this year they're actually supporting the killers in in the killers uk tour this, like, this he's 50 summer, now fran healy is he is oh, he is Lord. yeah uh, so that's what that's that's the latest Travis news. Anyway, <laughs> tune in next week. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> More Travis. Fat lads discuss Travis. <laughs> oh, fat lads turn. Um, Good one. Thanks. That was one of their songs. It was one of their what songs. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it always round on the fat lads? Um, I think Rowett knows what needs to be done. I, th- I think he knows that we are absolutely desperate and crying out for leaders i don't know if you know pew but i was on bbc wm on friday as well with uh talking to martin o'connor uh, no you were oh, not was, uh, martin o'connor agreed with me he said you know what Mark? no your insight into football and birmingham city is phenomenal astronomical I knowledge i, I said yes yeah, skip cheers it. appreciate that mate no yeah. um Did you call him skip I called him Skip once and felt really wanky oh, for doing so. <laughs> and never did it again. Is... <laughs> I called him Martin after that. His name is Mr. O'Connor. Mr. O'Connor. <laughs> uh, but no, he, he was saying on there, we are screaming out for leadership on the pitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are desperately, desperately, desperately searching for characters. We need a bastard and we don't have a bastard. We need a Barry Bannon. We need a Roy Keane. We need some, a like Robbie Savage. We, we are desperate for someone to be that bastard the closest thing we've got is Djokovic and he's the nicest man on the planet um, mm. but we just need someone to stamp their authority be it Sanderson be it Bakuna Ethan Laird can be the cracking little cheerleader he is at the moment we just need someone to grab the rest of them by the scruff of their necks and yeah. drag them kicking and screaming over the line my worry is I don't see it at the moment Pew. well we haven't seen it since well 
really all season, have we? No. To be honest, um, you know, and and for the last six or seven seasons, really, um, that there's been there's been a a real void of that. Um, yeah, we're we're a very very nice team to play against. I've I've felt that for a while that opposition will look at us and go, okay, there's a there's a weak underbelly. If we could get an early goal, if we could quieten the fans, if we can if we can put them under pressure, put the referee under pressure, then you know there's a real chance of of coming away with something against this lot. So um, <laughs> I think I, you're right. That is where well, it's a concern that I've had. Or you know, you've since... been banging that drum for longer than. My mate Skip. Um, Skip what? <laughs> you, well, Skip. To be fair, Skip knows his. Uh, no, Mr. O'Connor knows his <laughs> stuff as well, obviously. But yeah, He's Mr. Martin, sir. But you don't. You don't find yourselves in these situations every single season with with character. Do you know what I mean? Like you don't. You don't have your have these moments, regular, regular moments mm. where you lose, where you win one in twelve. You know, and find yourself slipping down the table dramatically. Um, so I, I think in previous years, obviously under BSHL, there's been an excuse for it. You know, the owners don't care. The manager might not be here next week. You know, <laughs> that's always, it's always sort of been the get out of jail free card for the players, whichever players have been there. Um, but there has been a lack of character bar Jude, um, mm. who for, a season as a 16 year old tried to get people going. You could um, see the frustration in Jude's face yeah. when he would run for a ball that never came. And he's turning around looking at these 30 year old blokes going, I'm a literal child yeah. and yeah. I'm putting more effort in than you. I'm more intelligent yeah. than you. I'm reading the game better than you. It must've been so frustrating. But you could see it in his self confidence, like, you know, conf confidence in your own ability to get yourself out of trouble as well. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. in, and he would, he would have been the one <laughs> trying to rally people and there was no response so um it's a bit like watching england at the moment really but yeah. um yes yeah, so, so but obviously since him that there has been a lack of it i think five captains we've had this season mm. um probably tells you everything you need to know really not really much of a a spine between any of them in terms of okay i'm gonna I'm going to take this, as you said, take this game by the scruff of my neck. I'm going to make sure that we're not going to give this up. Um, you know, characters shown in different ways. They'll 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 keep playing and they'll keep trying in, in games that, like they did against Watford. But um, it's that it's that absolute determination and ultimate mentality to say, okay, I'm going to be the one to to get us out of it. I'm going to be the one to make a difference here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So predictions for QPR. QPR. Um, I've done this before and it hasn't gone well. Um, but do you know what? It's Easter. Um, the there's little kiddies. There's little kiddies out there who maybe maybe you, their mums and dads are struggling at the moment financially. Um, and they're worried about not being able to buy their little kiddies Where are you an going Easter with egg, a chocolate egg. Um, so I'm absolutely nailing it. And I'm going to say, whatever you have, whatever you own, whatever you possess, sell immediately <laughs> and put it all on the draw. <laughs> all of it. Everything. <laughs> so if houses, houses, Easter cars, eggs. What, what literally whatever go okay. go and put it on the draw and reap you know reap Absolutely the success that turn. comes from that and go and buy your little child little timmy a wonderful <laughs> easter egg this this easter this like, christmas this easter like when you told me to put a tenner on watford to win uh watford, yes us to beat um, watford, oh, yeah, yeah i was to beat watford yeah. yes yeah, yeah, yes. yeah appreciate that yes thanks, thanks. you're thanks welcome for that losing yeah. the money um which is why i said this has happened before yeah no so um, don't listen to you is the yeah, kind of it's very important to, to to you know bet responsibly only bet what you can afford and don't but to also sell everything <laughs> and, put it on the <laughs> and splurge out this easter go wild man get one of those weird shaped toblerone ones that they've got out at the moment <laughs> the really expensive ones how much is really expensive? 
Oh, October. you've got some right in the shops now that are like 15 quid. For a Easter I egg. know. But you get less yeah. chocolate than an actual chocolate bar. Apparently so. But, so, I mean, the, the 15 quid ones are pretty big and they're okay. decent chocolate as well. Like your, I think there's a Ferrero Rocher one. I would one. do like a Ferrero Rocher. Um, What's your favourite chocolate, mm, Pierre? But the egg, the egg is like the Ferrero Rocher. So what? it's not just like a plain egg. I think the egg itself. So there's like a is... massive basketball size no, no, hazelnut no, no, in the middle. No, no, but it's got <laughs> or like just the, one the, tiny the, one, just it's buried got the nice under bits loads. On the edge. <laughs> right, okay. What's your favourite yeah. chocolate, Pierre? Ah, oh, it's a good question. Thanks, mate. After I waxed lyrical about Fredo caramels recently, you I did. think that's you uh, I should really. You can't choose that. Continue to bang that drum. Um, I would say, I tell you what, I do like a star bar. Oh God, you're boring. Oh, you're so edgy. Oh, what an edgy boy. <laughs> Whatever. You ask me the question, sunshine. If you don't want the answer, <laughs> I, I don't mind the answer. I just, I just don't respect the answer. Oh well, yeah. I don't expect you to respect my answers anyway. What's your favourite chocolate bar? I do. Terry's like... chocolate orange. No, no, that's we don't eat our own. Um, I do like a picnic. <laughs> I do like a oh. It needs to have nuts in it. Something with nuts. Okay. I just some love substantial. some. I love nuts. It's too easy. I'm not even going there. <laughs> How about the Preston oh, game? Uh, Preston, we have to win. We have to win. We got UB40 coming on afterwards. <laughs> we cannot play. We cannot have UB40 playing to a handful of people. So, um, a barrage of after our beer cups. after our wonderful one-one at QPR and like. The whole of Birmingham has become three times richer. Um, I'll go two one <laughs> Preston. <laughs> two one Preston. <laughs> two one Preston. Two one Blues. My apologies. In, two one Blues in the Preston game. I'm gonna say keep right on <laughs> forever. <Yeah>. Fuck off. <laughs> Have that, you prick. No. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna agree, agree with you on the draw, but I'm not gonna tell people to bet their life savings on it for QPR. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Although no. No. I have now. I have. Yeah, I have, no. So. In, in Rowett, we trust. I'm going 3 0 Blues against QPR. 3 0 Blues and <laughs> QPR. Blues. Right. Uh, yeah. Djukovic, three headers. Boom. Um, Almost certainly not playing again this <clears throat> season, but okay. <laughs> They're just going to wheel him on. <laughs> Duke, mate, you're literally the only semblance of a character we've got. Yeah. If we can just prop you up against the back post. <laughs> Two going off the leg brace. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that would have been a better joke. Djokovic with a brace. Fuck. Oh. Missed that chance. Never mind. No, you missed it. Missing goal, jokes Marcus. all over the place. Oh. <laughs> Missing jokes like Tyler Roberts here. Um, you know what? I like it. That one was all right. Crow by that one in. Um, yeah. Preston, I'm going to go... I'm going to go 1-0 us. I'm, okay. I'm saying six points I over like the Easter weekend. I like that a lot. This well, I've the... gone four, which is very possible. <laughs> Uh, very positive for both of us to be honest it is it, it's yeah. it's the Travis song at the start mate it's just lifted everyone's spirits yeah yeah I agree <laughs> there's also I a agree. lot less pressure on a podcast when you know everyone tuned out like after the first two minutes no one's yeah. watching it yeah. so we, just we could be so, we literally just say anything now. <laughs> it's Sharon it's Shannon I feel sorry for <laughs> that's why we put hers at the yeah, end everybody, everybody's waiting for her bit and we're we, just rabbiting on that's why we're hoping that people stick with this go when's the fucking girl on yeah yeah. That. she's not never coming she oh, might get never back come. to the pitching on <laughs> <laughs> what was more shocking to you Christopher Pugh this week was it the fact that I opened with a song that you actually knew or yeah. that blues are buying wheels uh, uh, well I, I have to be honest it's the, it was the song. It was the song um, I thought it might have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that did surprise me. It was a shock um, to absolutely no one, really, wasn't it? But it's nice yeah. to almost kind of have it official, sort of. Yes. Well, I think, obviously, the rumours have been filtering out here and there. Um, to be honest, from the moment they came in, everything that they were talking about, you know, reiterating the absolute desire for revenue, revenue, revenue. Um, you kind of knew this was coming, um, and Sounds this like was a the way. Song. Revenue, revenue, yeah. revenue. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's a good follow-up to Red Red Wine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry, continue. <laughs> totally lost. What was I saying? Revenue. Y yeah, you sort of, you sort of knew that this was the way they were going to be going, and this was going to be their plan. Um, 
hearing the little bits that you do here they're, they're so they're so passionate about the city itself so if they've got the opportunity to you know they obviously they want the club to do well if the football club does well they've succeeded um and you know and, and you us doing well as a club getting to the premier league brings them all the attention that they need but the, the opportunity to actually not just make a difference to a football club but make a difference Funda- like a proper fundamental difference to the second city in the United in England is absolutely monumental. Um, and it's but it's the opportunity that they've got. It's the opportunity that they've been handed. Um, and I think that you know everything that you hear from them, that it just feels like they're going to take grab it with both hands. And this this is step what step two, step three in what is probably a 20, 30-step program to it's, take over the fucking world. It's also about time that we reminded people that we're the second city. So fuck your Liverpool off. Fuck your yeah. Manchester off. Fuck the, oh, yeah, I know Birmingham's the second city, but we think it's Manchester. Yeah. Ah, bollocks. It is yeah. us. And it's, it's about time that people remembered it was us. And it's about Skegness. time... Get lost. Get lost. You're not getting anywhere Bogner, near it. Bugger off. Yeah. It's about like time, that. but it's about time we remembered it. And and Brum is as as a whole, we're very self-deprecating. We are, yes. in my very biased, humble opinion, the the one city with the best sense of humour. We can laugh at ourselves before you even crack the joke. We we are mm. we are there to be laughed at by ourselves, almost to our own detriment. That we laugh yes. at ourselves so much, we don't promote ourselves enough yeah and it, this is this is our chance and it's a chance for birmingham city the football club it's a chance for birmingham the city to shout and rant and rave and say look at what we've got here and look at what yeah. we can bring to the world and the country so the the, the spurs stadium when that was built four thousand jobs this uh, co-op live arena in manchester being built that two thousand mm. jobs they reckon this wheel site is going to create at least three thousand jobs for the area it's going to bring yeah. the whole area up and we're not just yeah. talking a stadium here, or not just an arena. We're talking an entire complex, like yeah. an entertainment complex, a sporting complex, attracting global money, global eyes, all it's into everything the around that city. as well. Everything, mate. It's it's the, obviously we Blues fans, we're biased, so we are going to hype this up as like the biggest thing to happen to the city. Blah blah. blah. We are we are going to be very hyperbolic about it. But every single person in this city. Whether you like football or not, whether you like blues or not, Villa fan, Baggies fan, Warsaw fan, whatever, everyone in the West Midlands should be absolutely hyped to the moon over this deal because of what it brings to the city and all the the surrounding area, the outskirts, the the leisure industry, the hotel industry, the the tourism industry. It, it could be so big. I mean, you you've had the pleasure of joining me at Wembley to watch the NFL. Yes. The place is alive, isn't it, mate? The whole, it just, it takes over. And people flock from all over the United Kingdom to watch a game of yes. American football. Imagine that yeah. in Birmingham, mate. But I, I, you, you say imagine it, like, and, and there'll be people going, well, yeah, like, maybe, but... There is no maybe. We sit here imagining it. They're sitting there drawing Building it up. the fucking thing. Do you know what I mean? They're, they've been drawing it up since the moment they came in. Yeah. You know, a bit, uh, this is how clubs, areas attract, re- develop revenue. <laughs> you know, you get money in by doing all these things. You, you know, you put everything in place and things will follow. Um, you know, as you say, the um, tourism industry, hotels, um, entertainment, food and drink, quarters. Transport links. Tra- transport is massive. You know, you... You obviously you've got the wheel site itself, but then all the little areas around it who might get a new tram stop, who might get a train station nearby yeah. that goes straight to New Street. Uh, you know, uh, it makes somebody's life there easier to get to work. You know, in New Street rather than having to walk half an hour through Digbeth or whatever. And just the, the city centre will regenerate because if, you know you've got this. In what I'm sure there will be. Uh, aiming to be like a an internationally renowned stadium, not just for football, for sport, for, for concerts, for everything. You, the amount of people that will be coming in and out of Birmingham to this arena, to this 
complex, Nighthead Park, it, it, you know, everything that they want it to be. Um, it's it's huge. It's huge for Blues. It's huge for the city. It's massive. We had that um, on on Takeover Day. Myself and Ivory had that the meal with um, Stephen Did you and, with, with, uh, with Rakeem and Dan no, my mate. Rax. Oh no, Rax wasn't uh, there. No, uh, Ste- right. Stephen Knight. Uh, and and yeah. it talked about like a Peaky Blinder museum, um, mm-hmm. like amusement sort of mini theme park thing. And we kind of said it jokingly, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, that'll happen." Yeah. Like completely straight face. Oh, it is happening. You you say any of these plans that sound wild in your head, if you say them to yeah. anyone at the club of any level of importance, they go, "Well, yeah, yeah, that, that, why that not? that's in the plan. Like we could show you the yeah. plan, but we can't. But yeah, yeah, that's in the plan. You think, oh, I was like exaggerating, but it, it's all there. And the the ambition is absolutely off the charts. Yeah, and and this whole people worried that if we go down, what will happen? Will they pull the plug? And I was worried about that so much so that I asked the club about that um, and was told, don't be so daft, they're not going anywhere. Mm. This investment into the area is the biggest slap in the face to wake people up to say, we are going absolutely bloody nowhere. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, Ivory said, um, I think he wrote a piece and he said it would be good if, if sort of Nighthead came out or Wagner came out and said, look, don't worry. If the worst happens, we're not going anywhere. You don't have to now. He just bought a 48 acre plot of land yeah. next to the club with the ambition of generating yeah. thousands of jobs, building a new complex. Like, there you are. There's your ambition. Stuff, yeah. you, stuff you're coming out and addressing the fans. It's right there. Black and white. Bought it. Like, he went through today all. Oh. Fine, like I don't understand the legal ramifications of the paperwork. Yeah, it was the it was the um it was the uh, approval meeting I think today with the council, wasn't it? So they've they've signed it all off and agreed. So obviously there'll be legal contracts and and fund transfers that need to go through and whatnot. But um I'm yeah I think probably a month by the end of the season certainly mm. um the the keys to that plot will be ours um. Can we finally um, have it as a car yeah. park again? It'd be nice. The Chris Pugh car park. The Chris Pugh Memorial mm. Bumper Car Park. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With a big statue of my course outside. <laughs> a big, a big 30 with foot no painting front, of your compo no... face. Yeah. <laughs> just looking at <laughs> <laughs> Just scrolling feed of your tweets going on and on and on. on yeah, on. yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be good. Um, will you be sad to leave St Andrews when the day comes? Uh, do, do you know, somebody asked me that the other day. I think, honestly, I, I'm however old I am. I've lost count now. But um, the last 10 years or so, <laughs> that place has lost so much of its magic that now, you, you know, even even now they've, fix the stadiums and that Sunderland game obviously where you came back to win and it was a full house and it was a fantastic atmosphere come the end of the game but it just feels like that place has lost so much of its spark from when I was a kid like and when I first went and and you know I'm cynical old me I'm sure if you ask like younger people you know it's still a a, a really impressive and a, and a big wow factor when you walk through those gates and see the stand stadium for the first time and things like that. And, you know, keep doing stuff to the, to the current stadium and making mm-hmm. it better for, for, for fans that go now. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I, possibly the American sports fan in me as well. Like the, the, the thought of like this new complex and a new stadium, it's just, it is very, very exciting. And I think, you know, this is the way to to progress your club and to and to move forward and to to really challenge in in, in terms of revenue, in, uh, attractive revenue and sponsorship and everything like that. It's it's the way we had to go, and it's the way I'm really looking forward to us for us to go beyond your wildest dreams. Uh, well, if you ask, yeah, obviously, when. <laughs> Lawrence Bassini's on the phone to talk sport oh, and. Man. Paul, Paul Richardson and Maxi Lopez are in a car park selling we us. We bought this that, club. We bought yeah, it. We, they, we yeah. can't wait. Then, then absolutely, it's beyond the wildest dreams of of those moments. Um, so, so yeah, hundred percent. Last week we had Steve Wall on. 
Wally Waller. Waller, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He recently, because apparently he has a lot of downtime at work, he's watched oh, yeah. every single meeting with the mayor in a row. Jesus. Yeah, I know. That's some joking. slog that is. That's like a death 20 hours of unadulterated ivory. Um, and a couple of me. <clears throat> and a couple of you. Yeah, they're the the dark times. Um, that's that's when we're really scraping the barrel. But he's he's watched it start to finish, uh, and just it texts me throughout them, and then you it kind of you just remember how shit it really was. Yeah. And we're not there yet. The stadium isn't built. We haven't even got our, the keys to the land yet, like you say. Mm. But if you just look back at that first episode we did with Ivory. And you realise just how bad it was. And even go further back, go into the backlog of Almagir.net and look yeah. just how bad things have been for this club yeah. over the time. Um, people put out threads on on X um, of all the, the bantery times at Blues. And mm -hmm. a lot of times they don't even scratch the surface of, no, of, of no. the crap that's happened. We are so, I mean, so far away from it now. I know, I know companies that were doing work for Blues and were being offered... Um, tickets for games because they literally did not have enough cash to get through the week mm -hmm. if they'd have paid the suppliers and, and the people doing work in and around the ground. Um, they, those those were the dark darkest times, you know, and, and I think now, like you say, yes, we don't have the keys yet. Yes, we don't have the land yet, like all but, in all but name, but the fact that you know that the guys who are in charge of this club are dreaming with us mm, then more than us yeah they're, they're dreaming it's like we we it's almost like we turn around and say well yeah i like maybe we could like what sort of why not what, what why not why couldn't we do this but in the the our why couldn't we do this is there why aren't we doing yeah, this why wouldn't we do it do you know what i mean yeah what yeah. as if we wouldn't do this yeah. like this is this is our dream this is our ambition this is it's not a dream it's a it's their plan yeah you know it's it's our dream if you like yeah it's yeah. their plan and and they're the ones you know the, uh, it's, um, fully trust them to to make it happen they've been leaving these breadcrumbs since the day they came in they've, they've said yeah. since day one that yeah. our plans for this club st andrews isn't big enough yeah, like it's there. They've been saying it, yeah. and that they've been they've been hinting at it. They obviously can't say we're buying wheels, but they they have been saying, look, we're going to upgrade. We've got big plans, blah blah blah. Um, believe them when they say it. Mm. Yeah, because but the, every the step of the way now this is astronomical. Yes, and but you're right. Every step of the way, every every you know, and and to be fair, Tom Wagner, um. Obviously, I think he's going to be attending the next open house, isn't he? Which is in April. Um, I'm sure everything that we're talking about now is is what he will. We, uh, we are they talking about ambition? Yeah. Um, I think that was the key word for this hmm. open house: ambition. Just, just to, you know, reveal a tenth of what you're planning on this yeah. site. And that'll be all the ambition that you'll need to sell yourself to these fans yeah, because, um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it, it's going to be amazing. I've said it, said it before. If I ever get any horrific news in my life, I want Wagner to deliver it because I think I'll be sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that? I've got 36 hours to live. Ah, that's fine, mate. Don't worry about if it. If Tom Wagner would have re released the news about the Travis drummer breaking his back at that time. <laughs> I think everybody would have given Travis a bit more time. They'd have gone to, into to the get back. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame there. And yeah, effectively, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. People would have accepted that. Oh my God, this guy knows what he's talking about. Like Travis are the greatest. Um, so yeah. So I, I was asked about uh, leaving the the ground earlier, um, and I, I think what you said is is right. I I have very fond well, memories. Duh. Well, obviously, it goes that side. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I have very, very fond memories at that ground, but they're not—they're yes. not of the ground. They just happened at the ground. Yeah. Uh, and my childhood there, I remember sitting on the old wooden benches at the top of the railway stand. I remember being scared to death when Millwall turned up and ripped all the seats out, and they found firecrackers under the seats when I was like a kid. Uh, I remember making songs up with my dad uh, because we were so bored at the football we were watching. Um, 
na 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 Mars done you can leave now your car's done stuff like that um I remember oh. Uh, car trouble. Oh, car yeah. trouble even back then. Get it? Yeah. Because we only had... like He's only here because his car broke down. We didn't actually want it. Yeah. It's, it's a very clever joke for an eight-year-old kid. Um, <laughs> but, and, and like those memories will always stick with me, but that, I can also carry them into a new stadium. Mm-hmm. I, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the love I have for St. Andrews has been beaten out of me as the new owners, or the old owners, sorry, BSHL, allowed it to get beaten out of us. Yeah, Once yeah, the stand definitely. started crumbling and they were, it was literally falling, out, falling down around our ears, mm. it's hard to love a place like that. You can love what it represented. And I hope, I, it would be nice if they kind of kept it. Maybe they turn it into like a community ground or something. Um, obviously, Arsenal turned Highbury into flats. I'm not sure yeah. St. Andrews would stand up still if he turned into flats but <laughs> it would be like yeah neighbors bungalows like the wall and the wall goes bungalows. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. um it would be nice if they do something with that land but they talk a lot about the heritage of the club and the, yeah. the history of the club and obviously there's plans for the hundred and whatever it is is it 50 yeah. 150 175 years how oh my maths is horrific. 150 years 150, 150 years it is there's yeah. plans going on, on for that um, I think that whatever gets built in X amount of years' time, because it's not going to happen tomorrow, it will take potentially a decade, if not longer, mm-hmm. um, they will carry the core um, vibe of the ground over whilst updating it at the same time. I think. Yeah. I don't think they're just going to go, well, flat on that, who gives a shit, we're off. Um, yeah. West Ham have a little bit of that. I know their fans hated and pretend, well, still do hate the stadium they're in now um, because their allegiances lie with bowling ground um mm-hmm. i i think i get the vibe and i could be miles off i uh, yeah i could be i could be completely wrong this is purely just my speculation and opinion i think they appreciate the history of the club more than other owners perhaps do at new clubs they've bought yeah but i think <laughs> it's silly things like the blues matters getting supporters on board in those areas the official supporters clubs that they're doing, um, all these sorts of things. There's so many people that now have a direct link to somebody at the club. Um, you know, the, the interaction between employees of the club and supporters is is massive now. Like the opportunity to hear what supporters think is there in, in abundance. So the consultation between owners, employees and supporters will be an ongoing process. I'm sure about how they want. And oh, listen, ultimately if, if, the, if blues fans don't want something absolutely that the owners feel is a hundred percent pivotal, let's say they put one, want to put a casino on the site and blues fans are totally against it. That casino is being built. If it's bringing in stupid amount yeah. of revenue, then it's probably going to be built and they'll have to, you know, <laughs> compromise somewhere else mm-hmm. for supporters. Do you know what I mean? But but ultimately, you know, the opportunity for fans to have their say is is there in abundance, as I say. So I'm sure that consultation will be will be ongoing. Do you get a sense of excitement being on a podcast at this time in Blues history? Like b- before, before blues get no. big and some proper journalists come in and fat lads dies by the wayside because they yeah. actually, like people who know what they're doing. Like get this... on with it. If they could get on with it, that'd be great. <laughs> this show will not exist in a few years time because a oh million God, other ones joking. will pop up from professionals. Um, yeah. But the side is... men will be all over blues <laughs> in a few years. <laughs> it is, is it the side men? Am I right there? I've, side oh, men. I've heard Something. that before. True. Yeah. Geordie or something is he one of the ma- men, the side men? I don't know. Um, yeah, it's it's very exciting for the city for for us as a podcast to be here as it's yeah. all going mad. Like it's it'll be awesome to tell my grandkids one day that yeah. that you had such a massive say in this incident. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, like the just there was a time if if it happens and, and the Man City dream is realised or even the the Newcastle dream, um, mm-hmm. just, just challenging up there, it would be nice to say you know what there was a time when it really was the pits at Birmingham City. Yeah, um, me and my mate talked bollocks on the internet for yeah. a couple of hours every week. 
They're all yeah. online. That's no way to talk about Rakim. He's a, <laughs> a lovely lad. They're all online. There's too much swearing, so you can't watch them until you're older. Um, <laughs> but we remember what it was like when things were turning. And it would be great to point back to this and go, yeah, I remember when things really turned around for this club. Because mm. we've had so many false dawns. It'd be fantastic if this is... A, a real, a genuine dawn. A real, genuine dawn. Like, like French. Dawn French. <laughs> <laughs> just turns up at St Andrews at night at Park. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Yes. Before yes. we move on to uh to Shannon C and back to mm-hmm. the pitching uh teaser podcast. Mm-hmm. Um do you have a pew ponders for us this week, Pew Leo? Uh, do, do I, a, I could, yeah. Uh, yes, I do you actually. Squeeze one out. Just I curl do, one out for us. I do, I'll give it my best shot. Um yes. So something that caught my eye this week, um, and I know, I mean, dangerous territory of, of going rehashing old stories and news. Oh, um, but there has been talk this week um, with the 2024 boat race, um, which oh. is an annual tradition. It's a rowing contest between Oxford and Cambridge universities. Uh, it's due to take place this Sunday. Uh, the 30th of March um, and there's been a bit of controversy this week um, I think it was the uh, crew from Oxford uh, who may have made claims um, about the safety and uh, the quality of the water in the River Thames um, which obviously is is not good at all um, and I think you know Big fans, regular viewers of, of Pew's Ponders will 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 know about my my stance on pollution of of, of our waters. You are an uh, aquatic freedom fighter. Absolutely, one hundred percent. With it with it being whether that's inland or um, international waters as Even well. Even a puddle. You just a man that cares about water. Yeah, yeah, just just yeah. Be careful of your water, basically. Um, so yeah, I think. Um, the, the the claim was that the uh, the water quality of the Thames is, um, I think the Oxford crew called it a national disgrace, um, which I totally agree with. Um, mentioned before again, there's high levels of the, tested the Thames. There's high levels of E. coli um, in in the water of the Thames. The crews have been told um, not to. Apparently, it's tradition for the winning. The winning team uh, they throw themselves into the water in the way, yeah. after after the um after the contest mm. so the crews have been told not to enter the water especially their cocks which obviously i think the women's race is first so they don't have to worry about that but then the men's yeah they're gonna have to be a bit more careful um so just take that advice on board um it's interesting that the women's race is before the men's uh, i'm assuming that's you know um the, the men's race is is the pinnacle still um with 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 this competition um either that or or women are just more expendable and they're like the lab rats here and they <laughs> see survive if they the come open. out green yeah yeah <laughs> give it an hour if it, if none of them have dropped dead then it's probably safe for the men <laughs> to go in the water as well um i just, I just thought you know Maybe just put it on at the same time. Um, what? Yeah. <laughs> just race at the same just time. Alongside, alongside each other, yeah. Okay. You start, we start. <laughs> you know. um, but anyway, yeah, I digress. <laughs> I think what, one of the, what, one of the um, you know, and obviously water pollution is a, is a, massive, a massive deal. And um, I think there's the statistics that have been done by environment agencies that show the amount of sewage uh, spilled into our rivers and seas um by water companies has more than doubled uh in 2023 than it was in 2022 which um again is 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 a big problem um considering our water bills are going up every year um it's it's something that needs to be addressed massively um i think the the oxford crew member who who called it a national disgrace i think he said they said why would you put your kids out in that which is a really good point. Mm-hmm. Um, why would you put your kids in uh, an outdated elite load of bollocks that 
has been going for 169 <laughs> years, and honestly, nobody gives a fuck about it anymore. <laughs> Come on. Because <laughs> seriously, it is, we have progressed so much as a society, and yet these posh twats <laughs> from Oxford and Cambridge University still think that people have got enough time on their hands to just stand by the river for four hours and watch them row. That's not how long it lasts. Four it's like a know. 20 minute race, isn't it? If that. Yeah, last is it 20 minutes. It's not four hours, mate. It's a, it's a boat uh, race, it, not a boat like marathon. It's going on forever. Well, if it's 20 minutes, why can't the men and the women start at the same time? Because then? they're getting each other's way, won't they? They won't get in each other's way. It's the Thames. Have you seen the Thames? You can get four <laughs> canoes in the Thames. Four canoes. You get a whole boat down the Thames. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's four, the it's boat four race. miles. Scrap the boat race. It's a joke. Fix the waters, definitely, but scrap the boat race. Nobody's interested. Four miles. Cambridge, Cambridge have won four out of the last five, Mate. by the way. Come on, Oxford. What's we're, more we're impressive? With the, underdogs. the average time taken to complete the course is 20 minutes. What a guess. Are you impressed with that, at least? 20 minutes. What's the point? What's your problem with a 20-minute boat race? What's, so that What's the point? To, like, what's the point of any sport? <laughs> what's the point? It's not, you know, what are we talking here? What? Are they elite athletes? Yes. Have you ever rowed about? Have you met Steve Redgrave? Yeah. No, you haven't. Neither no. have I, but I'm sure he's very but impressive. He's got five gold medals. Did he Did he do this race? Probably. Are we, are we saying only do I need people to Google who that go to as well? and Cambridge can, go, can win gold medals in rowing? Are they the only ones Come that... On. Is there like a playoff to get there or is it just them? No. It's like the Six Nations. You, you don't, you don't, you don't, it's not like a last 16 tie against Durham. Oh, I wonder who's winning this boat race. It's just always Oxford v Cambridge. Ah, uh, he didn't go to Oxford or Cambridge, so no, he probably didn't. Well then. Is it really a sport if an Olympian can't enter? Maybe that should be the right new point. new right bar point. for whether something yeah. is a sport or not, because Darcy yeah. isn't really a sport, is it? Yeah. Well, let's face it. Oxford Uni versus Cambridge Uni in a boat race along the Thames. Like, that, is, that has got the same amount of interest for me as... Cannot supporters club against Yorkshire supporters club on the really, St Andrews really at Nighthead Pitch Park. Are you not going to come and watch us uh, on the last time? Park no, I could, couldn't care less. You're not going to come to not... Nighthead at St Andrews Park and watch us? As long as the game's only 20 minutes. Then... <laughs> <laughs> Have you never watched what? the boat race ever? Oh, no. Not once? No. Not having no slight... interest. So how can you slag it off? You've never Zero even tried it? interest. Zero. Why? Why? why you just spent what? six minutes talking about it. I could go down to the local gymnasium and watch one man sit next to another man and row and see him wins machine. over 20 minutes. You think that's the same thing? I think it's exactly the same thing. <laughs> and those two chaps wouldn't get E. coli. <laughs> Safer. <laughs> sort the waters out and scrap the boat race. Okay. Good. And come on, Oxford. Up the underdogs. <laughs> Good. Okay. Brilliant. I'm, I'm glad we, we settled that. Is the more... Why is Cambridge better? Is there more waterways in Cambridge? I'm not Oxford? sure, actually. I think, yeah. it's, Oxford is essentially just, just a big um, university, isn't it? Well, it's massive, yeah. No, but I mean, the, the, the town of Oxford... I, it I think it's pretty big. Is it Oxford or oh. Cambridge that was basically built for the university? It could be Cambridge. It's got to be Cambridge. It could be Cambridge. Oxford's bigger than... I don't uh, remember there being much water in Cambridge. Okay. Mm. But they must go somewhere. Where's well, close to Cambridge? Uh, the Atlantic. Uh, no, that's that's not what they one. should do. That's a real test of metal. <laughs> just row, get, get Oxford, to sea, and just row. If Oxford versus Cambridge, first to New York wins, <laughs> yeah. then I'll give that a go. Yeah, I'd watch yeah. that. Just how far yeah. can you row before you drop dead? Yeah. Well, fuck, maybe fuck the not pollution that, sharks. That much, but yeah. Yeah. Well. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of E. coli in the sea as well. That's the trouble. Sort the seas out. Fix the seas and the waters. Good. Thank you. Um, thank you for wasting 10 minutes of everyone's time. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> that doesn't mean to go on. <laughs> anyway, we move on to back to the pitching podcast. So I'm I, looking forward to this. The, this originally, um, I was speaking to, to Shannon, just ran, completely random, popped up on Twitter, started chatting to her um, about... Okay. Would you like to do like match reports or something? Get the little segment on phallus because I, I, I am a moron with a microphone. I am a moron with a micro penis. I am a moron that knows nothing about women's football whatsoever. Don't watch it. You're you're the women's football person. I'm not. Um, and it, well, I feel like I need to drag us kicking and screaming 
into like like trying to drag you to watch a boat race i need to drag this podcast yeah. into the 21st you're basically century. dragging yourself along aren't you you don't need to you don't need to win me over, no, so no, no, I don't need to you're dragging over. yourself along basically anyway anyway shannon uh put together this little show uh, and i was expecting person in front of a camera talking nonsense like us she had like yeah. full-on match highlights she had stats she had the lead oh, table up there's like you've actually put real effort into this mm. you've clearly never watched fat lads that's not what we're about you're going off brand here love um it's like so much so that to sort of email the club and say, is this actually all right? Can we use <laughs> match highlights and stuff? But anyway, um, so that's developed into this new podcast, sister podcast, I suppose you could call it. it it's going to, she's going to have her own um, playlist on, on the Fat Lads channel. She can up, upload whatever the hell she wants with it. Um, it it's her little baby to, to cultivate as she fe feels fit. Um, so without further ado, this is, is Shannon with uh, Back to the Pitching podcast. Hi guys, my name's Shannon C. I have been asked to do a new segment on Fat Lads Going Goal about the Birmingham City women's team and I guess just about football in general. Um, so to start things off today, our podcast title is Shannon's Shiftcast as yesterday after 357 days out with an ACL injury, Siobhan Wilson was welcomed back into the first team. She was subbed on at around 86 minutes, I believe, and she played about 10 minutes. Um, her role in the game, she was very, very impactful as a sub. Um, so it's really good to have Shiv back. Um, we'll analyse some of those um, key parts in the game that she played um, later on. So straight into it. Um, yesterday, we had an important game to win. We've only got four games remaining now. Nice win yesterday, 2-0 against Lewis. Um, so let's just analyse that quickly. So let's just go straight into um, a bit of... Game analysis from the 2-0 win at home for Lewis yesterday. Before I start doing this, I must say that I am in no way affiliated with Birmingham City Football Club, Birmingham City Women, or anyone for that matter. I am just Shan. Um, okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is the first goal, Charlie Devlin. Um, a proper team goal, started at the back with Lucy Thomas. Lucy Thomas, nice pass up to Claudia Walker. Claudia didn't manage to get that, but um, Rebecca Holloway sees this out for a throw in. Rebecca has been absolutely unreal since she signed for us. It's a shame we've not had her the whole season. This goal comes from her. So um, up the left wing, Rebecca puts a lovely ball into the box. It's so unfortunate that Neve Heron just doesn't get the right contact on it. Um, and then again, not the right contact. Libby Smith also not not great. And then Charlie Devlin luckily is there to help us into a 1-0 lead. Um that's just the kind of stuff Charlie Devlin does, to be fair. She was in the right place at the right time. Um, just a slower version. Neve actually deserved that goal, so I was quite good that she didn't get it. I was really stressed. Had my head in my hands. Don't know how they missed the first two, but thankfully Charlie was there to put it past one, two, three, like six players, doing what she does best. Um, second goal then, assisted by Jade Moore. Lovely first, first touch from Jade Moore, straight to Claudia Walker. Jade has been amazing since she signed. Very glad to have her at Blues. Love you, Jade. Um, yeah, it was lovely to see Claudia get a goal as well. Um, you can see how happy they all are as well. So there was no goals after this. This was the 47th minute. Uh, I think there should have been probably one or two more. Definitely one more, um, which I'll show you now. The referee, not very good if I'm honest, but that's the same in all the women's games. It's just, it's a shame because the game's trying to grow, but then you've got people like that ref just not, not doing great. So... There was a few things yesterday. The ref was a head injury. She paid no attention to this at all. So two minutes into extra time in the first half, Liliad goes down before the ball's even come in. Jade Moore was shouting the ref. Liliad was shouting the ref. Lily's got blood dripping down her face. The ref did not care, carried on. It was only until they all started shouting that the ref went over to see what was going on. She still doesn't call anyone on. Now she decides to call people on. You can see that she's just, it's just not good enough. Louise Quinn goes over. It's just, you've got to protect the players. It was a head injury. She's bleeding and yeah, ref really wasn't great yesterday. But then there was another one which we could have scored from. So there was a really late challenge here on ne Neve Heron. Um, we managed to get the ball into the box. Brilliant ball in. And then the ref decided to blow the whistle there. We're, we're, I have no words for it. We were all a bit shocked. 
if that was happening in the men's game, I feel like there would be uproar. Come on, you've got to play advantage there. That There's three Blues players on the ball in the box. Just let play continue and then go back to the yellow after. So it was very unfortunate that we didn't score any more goals. Um, yeah, didn't really like the ref. But it's the same in all the games. Uh, you watch the likes of Arsenal. Arsenal played Villa yesterday. Um, one of their goals was offside, completely offside. And I've heard, didn't watch all of it, that the ball went out of play at least three times and the line nose just didn't do anything. So it's hard because that's, that's meant to be the top women's league. Like We're in the championship. It's not good enough for any league, be it the top, middle, bottom, whatever. It's just not good enough. So they need to do better. But anyway, on a lighter note, Shiv's back. Yay. This this is the reason why we, we, this podcast episode is called Shan Shivcast. Um, after 357 days out with an ACL injury, Miss Siobhan Wilson returns to play. So it's really nice to have her back in the first team. Um, I, I actually I can't wait for her to, um, you know, see what she can do because she never really got a chance before. So good to have her back in a blues kit um and you'll see now i've got some clips as soon as she come on it was a very impactful substitution she was really unfortunate to not get an assist i don't know how we didn't score the next two goals i'm about to show you but um she was only on for about 10 minutes first little run out so the first one she was pressing very high up the pitch manages to get the ball awful defending from lewis there Passes it to Libby. I think Libby just takes a little bit too long. The goalkeeper's off the line. She should have just smashed it. I don't know whether it went out with a deflection or whether it was wide. It was really unfortunate that Shiv didn't get that. And then the second one, again, Shiv's pressing high up the pitch, gets the ball, lovely pass through to Katie Dungate, which I think is a really good pass as well. And then, again, Katie Dungate doesn't do anything with it, which is very unfortunate for Shiv. Um, she actually mentioned in the after-match interview that she would have jumped into the crowd and took a top off if she got an assist. Um, very unfortunate that she didn't. She nearly did. So it's absolutely brilliant to have Shiv back. I feel like she can help in the last four games. Not sure how many minutes she'll end up playing. Um, we've got a big push, but yeah, 2 0 win. Should have been more, in my opinion. Overall, referees are rubbish. So, yeah, that was the game yesterday. Um, just go through the stats. Um, I was really surprised when I saw the stats for the game yesterday. Very surprised. We managed to keep another clean sheet, which is something I'm going to come back to because Lucy Thomas is absolutely smashing it at the minute. Um, I think she's she is currently top of the um, championship with clean sheets. Um, so the game yesterday, 55% possession for us, which I was quite surprised about. Um, but the interesting thing was, this is my favourite thing to look at, we had 13 shots and more than half were on target. So it was it was good. We had seven on target. Um, Lewis, however, not so great. They had four shots and not a single one was on target. Lucy Thomas did not have to make one single save yesterday. Um, I wasn't concerned at any point in the game. Didn't feel like they were going to concede at all. Our defence is in a really good position at the minute. Um, Cho has been absolutely unreal since she the first few games I saw her she was midfield sort of and now um, Darren Carter's put her in the back line and she's just unreal really unreal um, her and Louise Quinn Gemma Lawley Neve, Neve Heron has been unreal as well definitely my player of the season so far Neve Heron um, yeah we had eight corners they had five but I, I just, we had it all under control there was literally nothing to worry about Um Two yellow cards for each team. One of them was a bit silly. But again, that's the refereeing. The ref wasn't great, as I said. The ref actually stopped the game at one point to tell one of the players to roll her sleeves down. It was that pathetic. Like, there's just no need. No need at all. So that was the game yesterday. So now we've got four games left. Um, we're currently third in the league. Let me put the table on the screen for you. Um, we can physically do it. It can be done. So... The next four games are absolutely vital. Um, unfortunately, three of them are away games, so we've not really got the home advantage there. But we've got Charlton away, Crystal Palace away, Sheffield at home, and then the last game of the season for us is Durham away. So I've got confidence that the girls can pull it out of the bag. Last year, we were really unfortunate. I think we lost by one point to Bristol, but it's fine because Bristol are coming back down, so we can just 
switch places with Bristol. Um, so, yeah, nice attendance yesterday, 1,161. Um, controversial opinion, a lot of the crowd yesterday were talking about the use of musical instruments in the crowd. Um, personally, I don't like it. I feel like, because I play football, I'm nothing like our women's team, hence why I'm not a professional. Um, but if I was playing on the pitch, it would really put me off. Um, that that seemed to be the general consensus of the people around us as well. It was getting on quite a lot of people's nerves. Um, it's just very odd timings and England drumming patterns didn't really make sense to me. Anyway, back to the table. We are third. Um, in this season so far, we have kept the most clean sheets and we've had the least goals conceded and I think that is an absolutely amazing stat so the most goals conceded is Durham which we played last game of the season so hopefully we can bag a few goals there in, in case it comes down to goal difference um, we've only conceded 14 goals this season so far which is absolutely incredible we've played 18 games that's less than one goal per match which I think is really good um, tends to be less goals conceded away which doesn't make sense to me um, yeah, our statistic for home advantage is currently minus 28%. So it maybe it's a good thing that we've got three away games coming up anyway. So, um, yeah, so Lucy Thomas is absolutely smashing it. She's played all 18 games and she's kept eight clean sheets so far, which is 44%. She's actually kept more clean sheets away than she has at home. So, again, those three games coming up, it would be absolutely incredible if we could keep keep clean sheets um it's just vital at this point um especially with that table it's so tight it is anyone's game anyone's game so goal difference as well we are we're up there we're all right expected goals as well this one was really really interesting for me so our expected goals per game is it's higher than anyone else home away and overall so overall our expected goals per game is 2.19 um, home 2.32 and away 2.02 so we can do it I'm, I've got hope that we're going to do it and then next season we'll be playing the likes of you know Arsenal, Man City, Man United, Chelsea you know Mary Earps can finally come back to St Andrews you know anyhow my final talking point for today is going to be what I think of the season so far. So for me, there's been so many amazing players this season. It's been absolutely incredible. So at the start of the season, when I saw all the, the signings, I was a bit confused because there was a lot of midfield going on. You know, we had Remy Allen, Jade Moore, Christy Harrison Murray. There was a lot of midfielders, Lily Ag. Um, and then as the season's gone on, I can't pick one because it changes every game. So me and my friend Charlie, we always say, oh, player of the match. And it is so often always Neve Heron, Cho, and more recently, actually, Rebecca Holloway. She has been absolutely incredible. It's sad that we didn't have her for, for the whole of the season. Um, every game she's played, she's done something that I feel like has impacted the game. So the, the goal I've just showed you, the first goal we scored yesterday came from Rebecca Holloway. Um, Neve Heron is just absolutely incredible. Even when we lost 6-2 to Leicester, which we really shouldn't have, Neve started at the back. All of a sudden, she was in midfield. And then next thing you know, she's actually up top being a striker. She didn't actually score, unfortunately. It was really unlucky that she didn't score yesterday as well. Very sad for her because she's very good. Um, and Cho is absolutely unreal as well. Brilliant signing that was. So very happy with our team this year. Um, Claudia Walker, she's progressed so well as well. Um, really good now in holding other players off, keeping hold of the ball. Um, I feel like the team's in a really good place and I really, really hope that we can you know, get that final push and get us over the line into the WSL, something to look forward to, you know, because if the boys can't do it, you know, let the girls. So thank you for having me on Fat Lads Going Goal. I've been Shan and I'll see you again. Best yeah. women's, blues women's podcast you've ever seen? Yes. Yes. Without a shadow. On the that. Fat Lads channel, yeah? Yeah. Well, No. All, all round, all round. Ever. I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever come across anything better than that. See what I mean about the effort, though, with like the research and the stats yeah. and the the highlights. No, and... Do you know what? There's 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 dedication and and she's 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 got a, a keen interest in the game, which is fantastic. Um, you know, and and she knows what she's doing. She knows what she's talking about. So 
I think, yeah, the more the merrier in terms of uh, Shannon's content on the page. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, that's it for Fat Lads Going Gold. Uh, thank you for watching. Please do like, share, comment, and subscribe. And this week we're punching Gary Rowett in the dick to tickle oh, the algorithm. Um, we will, well, we all hope you have a lovely Easter holiday. We hope yeah. you thoroughly enjoy either seeing UB40 or walking out mid UB40 set, depending on what nope. the scoreline nope. is. No. Uh, it, I yeah, I think it'll be a great atmosphere this year before to kick. And tickets are cheap because there's a fantastic incentive going on at the moment as well. Mm. Um, but no, please do have a great Easter weekend. Please do enjoy your bank holiday. Please do gamble responsibly and don't listen to you not since <laughs> about putting it all on QPR. And please give, <laughs> fix Shannon, the water. give Shannon some love and yes, fix the water in the yes. Thank you very much everyone out there for watching. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe. We'll see you next week. ta -ra!